Okay, I just purchased a mint unpunched copy of uh, SPI's Soldiers, just tactical combat in 1914-1915. It was published in 1972. Now back in 1972, uh, I was not that interested in World War I. I had played Avalon Hills 1914, but World War I games I really had no experience uh, in. Now, in the last few years, I've become very interested in World War I, enjoying very much the lamps are going out from Compass and Paths of Glory from GMT. But more recently, I've become interested in tactical games on World War I. And uh, before I show you the components, just soldiers, um, I'll show you a little bit of my experience and how I came to get this game. Now, in 2010, Worthington came out with their game called uh, Red Poppies, which was World War I Tactics. And um, by that time, I was interested in World War I, and I picked up a copy right away. But it didn't take me long to become kind of disillusioned with that game, mainly for production reasons. Not that the game was no good itself. It was a pretty good depiction of World War I Tactics, concentrating mainly on trench warfare. But for reasons that I won't get into, it was the production values of the game that were, well, I'll say questionable. There's a lot of design decisions that I just could, couldn't understand why these kinds of decisions were made. As you can see, the counters here were very difficult to see. I didn't like the layout of the numbers. I, there was just much about this game I'm even embarrassed to state what I didn't like about it. So, Red po uh, Poppies uh, by Worthington, a worthy effort, but um, I just couldn't get into it. I, I got rid of it. Um, it's rather a rare game now to get, actually. Now we fast forward to 2016, and Compass Games released The Battle for Eeps. It was still by John Gorkowski, but he uh, changed the scale a little bit, and um, he did larger battles. There were similar choices to Red Poppies, but uh, I didn't get it at the time. Later regretted it, because I kind of wanted to get one, a copy of it. But uh, it went out of print pretty quick. Now it's kind of on the collector's market. And it uh, had some nice maps, and the counters were better than the original Red Poppies. But, like I said, I really couldn't get my hands on a copy. Uh, I guess they didn't print that many, and uh, it was going for collector prices, if you could even find it. But in the end, it really wasn't my cup of tea anyway, because it was showing you uh, mainly trench warfare. I'm more interested in the period in 1914, those first few months, August, September, before trench warfare, before the machine gun and barbed wire dominated the battle battlefield and uh, later tanks. So I was looking for a specific uh, period and I just wasn't seeing anything on it. Now in uh, what 2018 uh, I even took a chance on Great War Commander which was done by um, Roger Nord and Pascal Tupi and it was extremely tactical. I think it was practically the squad level of, of World War One, but again it just wasn't my cup of tea. Now it's going to sound as if I'm a very fussy person, but actually I'm not. It's just that uh, none of the games really fit the period that I was looking for, which was 1914, early months. So I began looking for older games that had been produced on that. And lo and behold, I found about uh, Soldiers by SPI. Like I said, I missed it in 72, so I really had no experience with it at all. Now, I downloaded the Vassal module for it, and I've been able to push a few counters. I've got the rules to it. So, I like what I'm seeing, and all of the reviews of this game have been very, very good. Not a lot of rules. It's got the old format that we're used to of that time period, the, uh, the folder kind of rules. Not complicated. Um, I've printed them out now, and I'm studying it. Of course, the 
consolidated errata sheet. And uh, we'll take a look at the board and the counters, give you an idea what the game looks like. Now, like the other games in this series, uh, like Grenadier, Rifle and Saber, and some of those, uh, they had a generic map, and you could play various scenarios out on it. Not very plain. By this time, they'd added a little bit of color. They've got this bluish uh, forests here, the hills and the streams. And your charts usually were on the side. Your combat results table, terrain effects chart, turn record. Uh, all on one map that comfortably fits on most people's tables, which I really uh, appreciate these days. So, um, it's not going to win any awards for artwork, but I don't care. It's functional, and that's what I like. Let's take a closer look at the counters. Now, there's the overall sheet of the counters. They have the standard NATO symbols, which were very popular at that time, and uh, your informational counters. And... Uh, I'll get in close here, and I'll explain what the numbers mean on the counters. I'm going to do a high, well, a good quality scan of the counters before I punch it out, because I do intend to play this game. Uh, I think it uh, looks like a very, very good game on World War I Tactics. Okay, generally the top left number is the uh, fire value, in this case 7 for an infantry, and that's its range, 4 hexes away. The little number there is the stacking value, and that's the movement value. Now, cavalry, for example, has sort of like a shock value of four, range one, which means it's got to be adjacent, doesn't have fire combat. Stacking value is still a four, and a uh, speed of eight, though. Here you can see the power of a machine gun. Fire factor 17, out to 10 hexes. Some limited movement, three, which I thought that was a little liberal, but uh, not bad. They can move, of course and uh, the stacking value of four. So that's what the numbers mean in the game. Well, how does it play? Well, as I said, I have very limited experience in it. Here I've got an unpunched copy, so I have not played it face-to-face -face or even solitaire moving the actual units. I've only fooled around with it on the Vassal module, which gives me an idea of what it's like. But you get 14 scenarios in the game, including, kind of innovative at the time, a solitaire scenario. And most of them are these early ones. Here's August 18th, 1914, a Franco-German meeting engagement. Scenario number two, Plan 17 attack, August 21st. And scenario three, a defensive action, Battle of Le Cateau, August 24th, and so on. So one of the engagements I'm interested in had uh, Canadian units in it, so I'm certainly going to give that one a try. And then there's this solitaire situation too. So, I don't know. From what I've read and the articles uh, I've seen on it, the game gets very favorable reviews. And um, when I think that this game is like 50 years old, um, I'm amazed that it still has this kind of durability. I think there's a lot more to this game than meets the eye. And the uh, designer, David Isby, he knows his World War I history, that's for sure. He's done other World War I games um, to the greenfields beyond, I think. I actually met Dave way back in the 70s. He wouldn't even remember me. I was just one of the anonymous peons in the crowd. Uh, well, he's a world-famous designer to me. I was much younger then, too. But he's a nice fellow, and uh, he's done one heck of a nice job on this game. So I'm just itching to get into it. So uh, I know this video won't be all that you expect it to be. What can I say? I haven't really played the game yet. I haven't even punched it. So um, it certainly looks good in my opinion. Now, I happened to pick up the game Grenadier at the same time. So I'll be doing a video on that, too which is another period that interests me. It's really the age of the musket and bayonet in the, you know, uh, 18th century, Marlborough period, Prussian Wars, Seven Years' War, very tactical. So I'm anxious to get uh, at that one too. 
So I hope this gives you some idea of what Soldiers is about because uh, as far as I know there's no other videos out, out on it. If you can get your uh, get a chance to get one, uh, yeah, you just might like it if you're into World War I tactical combat. If that isn't your bag, no, you might want to avoid this one totally. But anyway, that's it for Soldiers and uh, thank you for watching.